Hello, everybody. This is David Montesano, founder of College Match. And I've had the wonderful opportunity to talk to a really wonderful, cool guy. His name is Josh Collins, and he's the founder of Quarter Zero. We're gonna to talk to him about entrepreneurship for your team. I'm really excited for you to meet this great resource. Let's go ahead and get started. Hi, Josh, how's it going? It's going all right, David. Thanks so much for having me. Really a uh, privilege and an honor. My pleasure. So I wanted to start by asking, because a lot of our audience are parents of high school students, and here's what I think that they would really want to know. First of all, what's Quarter Zero, and what is your story, and why did you start Quarter Zero? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, I started Quarter Zero seven years ago, actually, for my younger brother. He was in high school trying to get a startup off the ground. And no one was taking him seriously. He didn't have access to entrepreneurial resources. He didn't have a like-minded community of peers. And people just weren't taking him seriously because of his age. And so from there, um, I knew adults actually struggled with the same things when trying to launch new companies. And they had places like Y Combinator or Techstars, uh, these incubators that gave them that credibility, the funding, the resources in the community. And I thought, man, what if we could do that for high schoolers? And so seven years ago uh, at the Harvard Innovation Lab, we launched our first pilot with 33 students from 19 states working on eight startups. And now fast forward seven years later, uh, we um, have worked with over 700 students from 40 states, 15 countries. And, you know, the big shift has really been and what we do is at Quarter Zero is our, our big focus is to really power the potential of young people to help them live to their fullest potential. And, and we do that through these immersive entrepreneurship programs that happen both virtually and in person. And it's, a, it's an opportunity for the students to really kind of start to find out who they are and to find out what their superpowers are and to work with other like-minded peers around the world uh, in truly solving a problem and trying to launch a company. It, you know, it's not kind of one of these school projects where they get a pat on the back and everyone gets a blue ribbon. It's actually working in the real world. So that's a bit about, you know, me and why, you know, Quarter Zero exists and what we're about is, is tapping into that potential that we believe every student has. That's awesome, Josh. I just was curious, how does it, so if I was a parent wanting to know, and you, you've given a great overview, how does it work though, the, you know, maybe more the nuts and bolts of it? I, I, you know, the classes, can, maybe you can give me an example of a class. Also, there's this really cool thing that I found out about, which is the quarter zero cup, which I believe is a competition. Anyway, I'd love it if you could kind of walk us through what a typical student might do and also let us know more about this competition, if you would. Absolutely, David, yeah. So, you know, the, the, the Q0 Cup is a virtual entrepreneurship competition, uh, something that we launched actually this year in response to the, the, the current global pandemic, where a lot of students had done a lot of great work in their existing classes, but they had their national competitions closed or canceled. And so we, as a response, wanted to do something to celebrate these young people. And in just two weeks, we had over 900 people apply to the Quarter Zero Cup. And it's a unique competition. It's not, you know, at Quarter Zero, we don't believe in business plans. We believe in actually, you know, taking action and, and taking those first steps in the real world and using customers uh, as the center of those uh, entrepreneurial ventures. So it's actually a staged engagement where the students get expert guidance throughout, and then it culminates with a live pitch to judges similar to Shark Tank. So that's the cup. And it's been a, a lot of fun getting to work with students from all over the country. Um, and, you know, more, more to your you know initial question like what does it look like for a young person to get involved in quarter zero so you know it, it looks like a couple different things for students um, who are kind of curious about okay what is entrepreneurship I watch Shark Tank I, I, I have all these ideas I want to do but I don't know how to take that first step so quarter zero is here to help you with that first step and to make that first step 
not as daunting as, as a lot of kind of business classes might make it where you have to figure out, you know, a 30 page business plan and financial forecasting and legal structure and all that stuff's a distraction. And so we, what we do is we take kind of this best in class information around entrepreneurship and we distill it in a way that young people can act on immediately. And we do that through our virtual reality hybrid programs where students actually um, engage with students from all over the world with VR headsets. And, and a part of it, and another way is, you know, our, our master classes are only 15 minutes long. And so that's where we go over one core concept. The student takes that with their group and actually integrates it into the venture immediately. And so, you know, that integration period can be anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours, but that's where the students are really working with their mentors and their advisors to figure out, okay, like I just learned this concept, but what does it look like in the real world? Like, how do I actually apply it to my venture? And, and so we have both a 10 day kind of startup camp, uh, that can be done with our virtual reality hybrid or for students that are looking for the full experience and want to know like what it's like for the first 50 days of a startup, we have our flagship catapult incubator. And that's where a student will, will truly kind of go through the, the ins and outs of like, oh, what is it like to have do customer discovery, to practice empathy, to identify that root problem? How do we ideate hundreds of solutions, build prototypes to test those solutions, and then take that feedback from the users and repeat the whole process again. Um, and then we also kind of, our, our, our flagship kind of in-person programs happen, um, you know, this year in August in Santa Barbara, California, where we, we work with students in person to um, learn about that entrepreneurial mindset, taking the same framework that Quarter Zero has won a lot of awards for, of that more real world approach and uh, it's mixed with a lot of fun things so you know from nine to two is kind of the uh, the learning engagement and then from two to seven is the fun stuff like surfing kayaking hiking sandcastle competitions and then seven to eleven the students get to really develop you know relationships with their peers hanging out by bonfires uh, chatting playing games and things like that so we both we offer that kind of like virtual opportunity for students who who maybe can't you know afford to travel or maybe just can't fit the travel into their schedule and then we have that in-person kind of premier uh, activity where students get to meet kids from all over the country and really understand what it's like to be part of the first 10 days of a startup or the first 50 days of a startup that sounds very cool. And if I'm a parent, I'm also wondering, why is it so important to start entrepreneurship, say, in high school, rather than waiting until the student is, you know, out of college? <laughs> and maybe one more question within that is, are there specific, and you've, you've already done a good job of talking about this, but are there other skills maybe in a broader sense that my student will gain by participating in entrepreneurship while, while in high school? Yeah, those are, those are great questions. And, uh, you know, to, to touch on the last point is having an entrepreneurial mindset is paramount to solving problems in a rapidly changing world. By the time these students actually graduate from college, 40 to 50% of the jobs that they'll be going after do not currently exist right now. In the last three years, um, over 6 million jobs have been replaced to sheer animation. Not, not shipped overseas, but like it's, they've figured out a way to um, replace those people. And, and as we shift from a more technical society to more of a soft skill society, we're going to need people that know how to adapt quickly, how to iterate, how to work collaboratively on teams, and, and to take that mindset, um, whether you're an entrepreneur working at a big company, whether you want to start your own company, um, it, it really, the, these skills that these students are going to learn uh, are, are relevant across all the spectrums. Um, and why start in high school? So one of the great things that, you know, I fundamentally believe young people have these superpowers to see the world world in a way that older people like us don't. And in what that does is that they actually are the best position to solve problems that young people have. They just lack resources, experience, mentorship, and guidance. And that's where quarter zero comes alongside them. And having that experience and getting to start it when you're 14, 15, 16, not only gives you the equivalent of like 10 internships, because it's actually giving you all these exposures to different parts of a company, it's actually starting to work your brain and that muscle memory around, okay, like, 
the more and more I do this, it's just like practicing an instrument or a language or a sport. The more you do it, the better you become. And so by the time, if they start when they're 14, by the time they actually do graduate college and are 23, 24, they maybe will have already accumulated their kind of what Malcolm Gladwell likes to refer to as the 10,000 hours, right? The mastery of the skill. Um, and, and that's why we think it's so important at quarter zero to start young. And, you know, our model is really to identify that top talent, continue to develop, and actually we invest um, in our students and their ventures. And our angel network actually invested a million dollars six months ago in one of our students. And so that's kind of why we believe this is so important to start at, at a young age. Thank you so much. Um, and it, it sounds more like it's, um, you know, the idea of what we're trying to investigate as well in future versions of these Zoom meetings is the idea of creativity as a habit and not so much just like you're either creative or you're not, or you're either a business, good business person or an entrepreneur or you're not. As you're saying, it's kind of a, it's muscle memory and you're developing that at an earlier age. It's going to serve you, you know, throughout your life. And I love that. Um, one, one quick question, though, is right now, and I'm sure parents listening might want to know, is during in this age of COVID, you know, can this be done from a, at a distance? Is that possible? You know, can people, what are some ideas and maybe working either with quarter zero or even other types of entrepreneurial opportunities for high school students? Is that is that even possible right now? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's actually the best time to to learn how to to innovate and to adapt because all around them, their environments are adapting, their schools are adapting, where they go and get their pizza place is adapting. You know, how businesses have to evolve and pivot right now is unprecedented in our lifetime. And And if the students that are in high school wanted to learn in this environment, it's only going to be an advantage for them. And so one of the ways that, you know, Quarter Zero is adapting and innovating actually is, you know, we're using, you know, virtual reality headsets. So, and so the students will literally put these on and in their, you know, engagement with their team members and their advisors, they're going to have a deeper level of engagement. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not so much like Zoom calls, but can be kind of hard for students after a long time, especially like if they're in school right now, they're probably sick of online learning, which is, which is why we've completely pivoted too. like we've innovated, we're taking advantage of the great opportunities that COVID has actually produced with students who are actually getting more time for themselves. They're getting more time to have better mental health, like balance and sleep. And, you know, it's, it's been interesting. Our, you know, the amount of students that have been interested in quarter zero has literally doubled in the last two months. And I think it's because students are finally getting the chance to like breathe a little bit. And now they're actually starting to think like, well, what, what do, what am I curious outside of school now that I have some extra time? And so I think, you know, being, being constrained to the current parameters of, you know, the housing and shelter and, and staying at home and businesses being closed and not even having the opportunity to walk up to someone on the street and ask them questions about a venture is actually an amazing kind of parameter to have to learn to innovate and to adapt into their environment. That's awesome. And, and one of the reasons we got in touch, uh, one of our, one of our st families uh, put me in touch with you actually. What, and I was really, when I learned more about your background and, and what you do, I was really, uh, you know, excited by it. Cause I, I, one of the things that our students, we try to get them do is to be involved in having some kind of social impact if they're doing a, a, a startup, you know, because that's ultimately what colleges really respect and, and reward students uh, in the admission process is for, having some kind of an impact on society, not just making money. So uh, not that that's bad, but obviously they want to see the social impact. And you've got a pretty deep understanding of that. In fact, that was part of, I think, your original sort of mission and intent a little bit. And if you could just speak to like that just slightly, you know, either an example of a kid doing that or, you know, maybe how that support, you know, could come about through, through quarter zero or outside of quarter zero, that might be really helpful for the audience as well to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's important for people to understand that we're a mission based uh, impact driven company. Uh, we have impact investors. We're pending benefit corp. Uh, we started when I was working at Ashoka as an entrepreneur in residence and Ashoka coined the term social entrepreneur. And so it runs deep into our, our, the kind of 
ethos of our company. And, you know, we, we even make sure that, you know, students from all backgrounds get to participate in quarter zero. But more importantly, when we're teaching them about business, we try to show that there, it's not a complete separation between nonprofit and for-profit and that you can make money while doing well and by having an impact. And sometimes you can have more of an impact as a for-profit structure. And so I'd say 40% of our students actually are working on social impact businesses, which is so exciting. Of that 40%, I'd say 90% of them are for-profit uh, social impact businesses, which is just an awesome thing to think about in terms of teaching these students young, like the, you know, how do you, how do you incorporate impact into a business model is completely new. It's not part of most business plans or, you know, is not part of uh, most competitions out there, but it's really something we try to teach in terms of like, how do you treat your employees? Well, how do you source materials appropriately? You know, what is the pricing that will allow you to do this in a fair trade kind of way, not just to under undercut like the closest competitor. And it, it offers, you know, a really, different perspective for a lot of students because a lot of students often think, oh, I'm going to go start a nonprofit or I want to start a nonprofit. And we actually don't recommend that. Um, you know, and why we don't recommend that is because we think that the students think of it as the only way to have impact. And so we really like to reframe the thinking of business and community impact and how it can survive and work with the students. I think that's, you know, just on a personal level, super brilliant to be able to integrate that stuff and, and really um, give students both a chance to do something creative, innovative, money-making, and beneficial for society, which is what colleges love. So I'm really thrilled. I have one last question for you, and I really appreciate your time, Josh, because I know you're doing so much uh, for so many people that, uh, you know, we as an audience know that your time's limited and very much appreciate it. My last question is, if, if, a, if a, high, a high schooler's parents listening into this, what are like just one or two simple things that they can recommend that their kid do now to get ready to be an entrepreneur or social entrepreneur? Uh, that's a great question. Parents are absolutely vital. And so are teachers actually in this, in this process. And so that's why we work with both. We actually have parent programming and resources for parents specifically to help guide their students through this process in which, a lot of parents aren't entrepreneurs. Um, you know, about 40% of our parents are, uh, and then 60% aren't. And so what we do for the parents that maybe are like, I don't know how to support my student. They have all these ideas and I'm, I'm not in that field at all, is, is first and foremost, creating a really safe environment for the students. And what we mean by that is with entrepreneurship, there's no answer in the back of the book. It's kind of this uncharted water and it needs to have fierce experimentation and failure. And the only way to learn is through the wisdom that comes through the failures. But often the students don't have a safe space to fail. It's, it's almost like not a place in the world. So parents, you know, one of the ways they can open up this safe environment is honestly talking about their own experiences. Like where with your career did you make a bad decision? And, and have that be the, the topic of conversation and to encourage, you know, the, to, to emphasize the wisdom that came from that bad decision and, and how they would do it differently. All of a sudden shifts the frame in which the student view, views the parent as like, oh, cool, mom and dad make mistakes. And that's often not something that is um, talked about. I know it wasn't with me growing up. Uh, and so that's one way they can do it. The other is, is to get engaged and to ask questions and to provide that kind of runway for the student to know that they have that safety and security to fail and make mistakes. And more specifically, that is like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Like it, you try this, you learn a lot along the way and you fail that's actually not that bad. It's actually, you know, getting to launch a company is way better than any of these students trying to find internships or trying to go and volunteer somewhere. It's not that those things are bad. It's just that everyone's volunteering. Everyone's trying to get an internship. If students really want to differentiate themselves, they should go and start something. I know a lot of our students get their first internships because they were so different than all the other applicants because they had started something. Um, and so that's something I would really recommend parents is to, to not be pushing just for, you know, go get, you know, pad your resume for college, but it's actually like, well, what do you really care about? What problems do you try to solve and then help them be really specific about just solving those problems in their local area. 
I love that. And I think our audience will too. One last thing is um, with all of our Zoom interviews that we're doing now in this age of COVID, we wanted to offer the audience some something, you know, maybe a way, you know, something for free, right? Just a, a, an offer or gift. And, and I know you, you probably have something in mind for our audience. Um, do they need to email you or how do they get, you know, get receive this, this uh, extra thing? Yeah. So yeah, thanks for um, asking. And w one of the things, because we have worked with your students before and they're really great candidates is, you know, all students interested that are viewing this and parents will get 10% off of our tuition, which is up to, um, you know, $400 uh, um, off tuition. So they can use that code between now and the end of the summer. Um, our, our programs are still live, um, kicking off in, in uh, June, July and August. So there's still time to participate. Um, and I know, David, I'll send you the, the, the code for that to send out to the students. But we'd love to have more, more students that are really interested in entrepreneurship. They're curious and they are just don't know where to take that first step and looking for that kind of support. Awesome. Again, Josh Collins with Quarter Zero. You're the, you're the best. I really appreciate that. Thanks so oh, much for bringing it out with us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and I look forward to being in touch. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right, have a great day. Take it easy.